there's a kind of debate at the table of pro-violence, anti-violence about what's the best struggle for, for freedom, right? For equality, um, the long, slow, peaceful path or the more violent charge towards equality. Hello, my name is Ethan Hawke, and I'm a co-creator of the show, The Good Lord Bird. I also played John Brown, and I'm talking to the AFI Movie Club. It's a super honor to be with you and to be selected by the AFI. It's one of the better shows of the year, and it means the world to everybody who worked on the show. I was asked to talk about a scene that I loved or that might have particular interest, and I, I selected one of my favorite scenes I've ever been in in my life. We give thanks for old friends and new emperor. We give thanks for this time together. We invite you into our, our minds, into our hearts. We give thanks for the turtle that gave its life for the soup and the cow and the platter. We give thanks for the, the hands that, that kneaded the dough, for the rain that you let fall on the grains, the sun that warmed every kernel. Yes, that reminds me of a pair of- Amen. Oh. Hey, amen. John Brown and Frederick Douglass have dinner together and he's there with his wife and his mistress. And I'm there with my young protege, Onion, played by Joshua Caleb Johnson. And uh, I'm there trying to raise money and trying to raise interest in the cause. The scene starts as any real dinner scene should with Grace. And one of the <laughs> fun things about my character is we were kind of highlighting John Brown's faith but how his faith went to an extreme and that we often, once he started praying, he couldn't stop. One of the things that made this scene so special is Darnell Martin, who was our director. And yet the reason why so much TV struggles is there just isn't enough time to rehearse. And she insisted that we all get together. We rehearsed this. What kind of help would Frederick Douglass have? How would the table be served? She was really trying to channel her inner age of innocence to figure out everyone's point of view and have them not be the same, that you feel the bristling energy of every different person's point of view. There's me combing my beard with a fork. Never underestimate an actor's desire to ham it up. Some nasty weather in Kansas. Mm -hmm. Rain, yeah. sleet, wind. We'd have possum for breakfast, raccoon for lunch. Possum and raccoon. A few nuts in the rain for, for dinner made us more fervent for the cause. <laughs> but we're done with Kansas now. Now I've communed with our Lord. He has a greater task at hand for us. Anybody who's acted for more than five minutes will tell you the worst thing to shoot in the history of film is a dinner table scene. Matching is a nightmare. Coverage is a nightmare because eye lines break down and you have to shoot for long, long hours. And to make it worse, everybody always tell you if you do have a dinner table scene, please, please, please make sure it's under two minutes long because they're just boring as hell. But Mark Richard and I, we were the co-showrunners of this, challenged ourselves to really make it a little play and to embrace and respect people's imagination enough to know, like, if you could be at dinner with Frederick Douglass and John Brown discussing how to make America live up to its dream, wouldn't you want to be there? I don't want to make some cute little scene. Let's get into it. It is in Empire imperative that we secure all additional funds for the cause of freeing my people. Ah, and, uh, and what exactly will these funds be used for? Men, provisions, weapons, cannons, for the emancipation of the Negro, of course. <laughs> Yeah, I like the sound. Of, I, I like the sound of that. Yes, yes, yes. But, but, what exactly is this new plan of yours? It will all become clear as soon as we have secured funding from the Secret Six. Mm. There's a kind of debate at the table of pro-violence, anti-violence about what's the best struggle for freedom, right? For equality, the long, slow, peaceful path, or the more violent charge. But the genius lies in James McBride's setting, which is, it's all really seen through Onion's point of view, which is kind of a Mark Twain, ridiculous air to it. It's the intersection of the comedy and the ideas were very interesting to me. Walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, but what they have seen in Kansas 
has shaken their faith in you, John. We freed slaves. Yes, by murder. Whenever you're dealing with iconography of a person like Frederick Douglass, who means so much to so many, there's this problem you can fall into, which is hero worship and deification of our heroes. And of course, when, when you make them not human, you don't have to live up to them. Part of what McBride and Darnell talked about is how it was okay to have a humorous relationship to Frederick Douglass and still treat him with respect. As someone who has never lived in bondage, never been owned, never been savaged, never been used to death and then discarded. Please do not presume to tell me what a slave will or will not do. The limited series is a new form. It's really in its infancy, but one of the things that is difficult is because the form, the canvas is so big, we don't have one director. Now this puts the role of the cinematographer, Peter Deming, who's one of the best in the world, in an uncharted land because he and I and, and Joshua were some of the few people that were involved on every episode. He becomes kind of the spine of the show. He's giving what normally you would relate on a director to do, to give authorship, you know, a point of view, a look, an aesthetic. And, you know, we didn't want this to look like TV. We wanted it to look like cinema. I always talked about it. You know, this was, this was a movie. It was a seven hour movie. That's what we were trying to make. Uh, and that's where we're in this new form called the limited series. And I, I'm so pleased that the AFI is kind of recognizing it as its own art form. Mm -hmm.